In this video, we review availability zones and availability sets. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, we review two availability options in Azure, availability sets and availability zones. And stick around to the end because we review mistakes you don't want to make if you're planning for a high availability in Azure. Before that, please like and subscribe to this channel, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Thank you members for supporting this channel. And if you like this content, check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Azure AD, and Windows 365. The links are below. Let's start with availability sets. And before we do that, we need to talk about fault and update domains. Azure data centers are split into fault domains and update domains. Think of a fault domain as a server rack. The rack is loaded with servers and storage, and at the top is a network switch, and the entire rack is powered by its own circuits, maybe two for redundancy. Now imagine a data center with hundreds of these racks. Each one represents a fault domain. If there's a problem with any of the components, power, networking, or storage, that could affect the entire rack, the fault domain. Update domains are also part of an availability set. Occasionally, Microsoft has to update physical hosts in Azure or the underlying infrastructure. When Microsoft updates infrastructure, it happens across one update domain at a time. In a data center, we have fault domains and update domains. Now, let's say we want to deploy three highly available servers, maybe front-end web servers or a cluster. Specifying an availability set will make sure that the three servers are deployed to different fault domains and update domains. If we don't deploy an availability set, it's possible that two or more servers could be placed on the same fault or update domain. That could lead to a multi-system failure for our application. There's no extra charge for availability sets and we can configure up to three fault domains and 20 update domains. The configuration can't be changed once the resource has been deployed. You can't add an existing VM to an availability set, for example. Availability zones take high availability further. A region in Azure is not just one data center, but multiple well-connected data centers in a geography. These data centers have their own power, cooling, and are well connected with low latency connections. In a region that supports availability zones, there are three or more data centers each make up a zone. When we deploy to availability zones, we're specifying that the resources are spread out to different physical data centers in a region. If we put our three web servers in availability zones, they would survive a single data center outage. This leads me to the first mistake you don't want to make with high availability in Azure. Don't use the same zone when deploying services that support availability zones. Let's keep going with the web server example. If we deploy all three servers and place them in the same zone, we're not getting the benefits of availability zones. Let's look at deploying a server in the portal to understand this better. If we go to deploy a server and select availability zones, we can select the zone. Now, if we wanted to deploy three servers for high availability with availability zones, would we want to put them all in the same one? No, we want to put each one in its own zone. Let's look at another service, scale sets. Under availability zones, we can select multiple. The scale set will spread each instance across zones we select with this option. Next up, let's look at the SLA for availability sets and availability zones. Here's the SLA for VMs deployed with availability zones. The SLA is 99.99%. That's good, right? But wait, read the whole statement. The guarantee is that you will have connectivity to one instance 99.99% of the time. Let's review the SLA for VMs deployed with availability sets. It's 99.95% and guarantees you will have connectivity to at least one instance 99.95% of the time. In our three server example, the SLA does not say we'll have access to all three servers 99.99% of the time for availability zones and 99.95% of the time for all three in availability sets. It means we will have access to at least one instance for the stated SLA time. That leads me to the last mistake you want to avoid. Don't assume 99.99% or 99.95% uptime is for all instances in an availability zone or set. Say we had three web servers in availability zone across three zones. Each is running 75% capacity. If one goes down and the load shifts to the other two, they're now at 150% capacity. This could cause performance problems or service interruptions. In this instance, we would need to plan for additional capacity to withstand an outage. The principle is the same for availability sets. 
That's an overview of availability sets and availability zones. I hope this helps you better understand the difference and mistakes to avoid when implementing them. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.